love was the biggest thing that struck me about this story. It just felt like the opportunity to bring um, black love to the screen in a way it's never been shown before. Um, you know, these you know young people who are true soulmates. Um, and you know, to me, you don't often get to see uh, black love, um, you know, portrayed like this in cinema. And so, you know, it just felt important. It's it's James Baldwin. It's Barry Jenkins. Um, it was a no brainer for me. And I read that you felt uh, in your spirit after watching Moonlight that you wanted to work with Barry yeah. Jenkins. I was wondering if you tell us more about what you meant by that and how delighted you were to play Funny. Yeah, I, I had been a fan of Barry for a long time. You know, I saw um, his first film, Medicine for Melancholy, obviously saw Moonlight and what that was able to do. And so I had put it into the earth that I wanted to work with him. I would tell my friends, I would tell my manager, um, gotta work with Barry Jenkins. And I'd be lying if I said that I thought it was gonna be this soon, but you know, the way that this is all sort of fell into my lap, uh, it just felt too good to be true. And it still feels too good to be true. So incredibly lucky to work with a filmmaker like Barry, who's one of the, the special directors that we have in the business today. Um, one of the special humanists that we have in the business today. And, uh, and what can I say? I hope, to, I hope to do many more with him. And Kiki shows us such uh, gorgeous, subtle strength in Tish. Uh, what did you like most about that character and the way that she portrayed her? And where do you think she gets her strength from? Um, it's interesting, you know, this is Kiki's first film ever, but, uh, you know, I really admire the way that she uh, was able to take this story on her back and, um, and carry this film in the way that she, that she has. She has a, an energy that's very palpable. Um, it's sort of this young, kinetic thing where, where um, you know, you like exploring and, and trying things and playing with, with that sort of raw energy. So, um, yeah, big, big credit to Kiki. And as, feeling, as well as feeling emotionally invested in the love story, audiences, I think, will come away feeling angry. And I was wondering what you hope this film could achieve. You know, for me, I hope that, and I think Baldwin wanted the same thing, is, is you know, people would get to see love in, in sort of a different light and, and see the power of love, you know, what this love can really get you through. You know, you see this couple who's gone through sort of the darkest time they, they possibly could have, um, but even at the end of the film, somehow seem to, you know, keep it all together. And um, I think that's a testament to the power of love, and I think that that's, that's what Baldwin wanted people to see. And as a musician yourself, I believe, um, what do you particularly admire about now twice nominated Nicholas Britell's work? Oh, love Nicholas. Love, love Nicholas. Um, what, a, what a genius. I mean, the music is probably one of my favorite aspects of the film. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know how, I don't know how this movie, you know, really translates without the music. The music is a, a whole other character, I feel. And I think the film will also widen audiences' awareness, including my own, of James Baldwin's work. Um, how aware were you of his work before this project? I knew Baldwin, um, you know, as an activist and, and as a poet but I had never read any of his novels. So after reading the screenplay, um, I read Beale Street for the first time and I'm just blown away by, by his language. You know, he had a very particular sort of language that was almost Shakespearean to me. And, um, and I actually went back and read Romeo and Juliet um, just to compare the two. Um, and I found a lot of similarities, but, but you know, Baldwin is such an incredible, vivid, um, descriptive writer that, that for an actor it's a dream to be able to adapt him. And just finally, the film's been garnering so much awards recognition, quite rightly. Uh, how much do you enjoy those ceremonies and let us into what they're like? I think it's fun. It could be a lot, a lot of fun. You know, you watch those ceremonies a thousand times from your living room uh, on the other end of the of the TV. And to, to be in that space and to know that, you know, you deserve to be here. Um, and, and, and to walk around and see your idols and people you respect and admire, have admired your whole life. Um, it's, it's kind of an unreal thing. Ceremonies can be fun uh, when things go according to plan. Uh, no, it's cool, especially the Oscars when you're there, you look around and like everybody's there. You know, I remember as a kid, 
um, when I say a kid, like being in film school, watching the Academy Awards and never imagining that I would be there, let alone um, on the stage. So that part's cool. I think uh, for this film, you know, I think of Moonlight and Beale Street um, in tandem. I wrote them at the same time. And for six weeks of writing to have secured uh, 11 Academy Award nominations, um, it's pretty damn crazy. Um, so it's kind of awesome, you know. I smiled um, when I saw the nominations, especially for Nick and Regina. You know, as the writer director, I sometimes get too much credit. I want to say, and it's nice to see the love spread uh, amongst the cast and crew. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about Regina. Um, she's just incredible in that role, and I was wondering, is there a particular performance that made you think of her as the right person for that crucial role? Uh, in a certain way, you know, I grew up watching Regina on Two Two Seven, which is like a very first role. And um, then also seeing her in like Enemy of the State, you know, Jerry Maguire, you know, and then with John Ridley on American Crime. Um, there's nothing Regina can't do. Um, and so I think for me, this character Sharon um, kind of embodied so many women um, uh, in my life and my family. And it was nice to find an actress or to remember an actress who I felt like embodied all those many different experiences. And you mentioned Nick uh, Nicholas Patel. I have to ask you more about that working mm -hmm. relationship and if he was your first choice after working on Moonlight. Uh, yeah, of course he's my first choice after working on Moonlight. Um, you know, uh, Nick is just a really uh, very open, very talented, but also, most important thing, very open uh, soul and spirit. You know, with Nick, it's always about the journey and not so much um, about... Um, there's no ego involved. And so what I love about working with him is, and I say this as a compliment, you know, the, mu the film could exist without Nick's music, but Nick's music couldn't exist without the film. And that's simply because of the way Nick approaches his work, which is he is not trying to impose his will, you know, on the film. He's trying to amplify the emotion um, of the characters. And I think in that way, the work that we do together always, I think, takes the message that the actors are putting into their roles and just takes it to this whole new place uh, sonically. And unbelievably, Kiki Lane's first feature mm -hmm. film. What did you see in her above the many other auditions that you saw? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. You're always looking for uh, the bullseye. And there were, I mean, we saw hundreds of young women, you know, many of whom were extremely talented, um, in some ways uh, appropriate for the part. But what I loved about Kiki um, was this, this combination of a very freshness, this vitality, this innocence, a very pure, the very pure essence of a girl, and yet in the same person you can find um, this old soul, you know, this very um, wizened, evolved experience of a woman. And that duality of experience was to me the key to uh, properly translating Tish from the page to the screen. And Stefan, um, what impressed you the most about him? We see so many different sides mm -hmm. of Fonny in this film. Yeah, you know, Fonny is a young man who's full of uh, life and vitality and energy. And unfortunately, because of this ordeal, um, very slowly over the course of the film, you see that light sort of like drained away. I think Stefan uh, is so wonderful at being both very fresh and vibrant, very pure and innocent, just like Tish. And yet, over the course of his work in the film, you see the horror of how um, this condition he finds himself in can drain that life away. You know, it's a very um, nuanced and subtle performance, and I think Stefan did a great job with it. And just finally, there's been a recent increase in film, TV, and documentary series shining a light on injustices like Beale Street does. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the Khalif Browder documentary, the recent Monsters and Men, and mm -hmm. The Hate You Give. To what extent do you feel there is a movement in the industry towards these pieces? I don't know if there's a movement in the industry towards these pieces. Um, I think that there are more uh, filmmakers who have a direct personal connection to these stories, a relation to these stories, who have taken it upon themselves to uh, use their their craft, you know, and their access to bring those stories, you know, into the public consciousness. You know, I don't know that art can change the world, but it certainly can change perception and it can shine a light on these issues. Bill Street was published 45 years ago, and yet so much that happens in it is still very relevant to today. And so I hope that in making this film in combination with The Hate You Give, Monsters and Men, you know, some of these inequities in the way we execute, you know, our laws, you know, and the ways in which the justice system treats uh, certain people, those things can be addressed.